Hello and welcome to this edition of The Fourth Gear, sponsored by Classic Auto Insurance out of Indianapolis. Today, we're with uh, Matt Crandall. And if people don't know Matt, a um, little history on him. He's got a, a great love for Porsches. He's actually extremely knowledgeable in a variety of different makes and models of cars. Uh, he, they say he has a passion for racing. I take it a lot further than that. He's a <laughs> Very seasoned, experienced racer, uh, uh, five times on the podium. He, uh, the three of those were on the top step. Congratulations. That's really awesome. Um, he also was a, a general manager for a Ferrari dealership, but one of the largest in the United States. He was a principal dealer uh, uh, with Lamborghini, and um, he, he's got a lot of experience in specialty car sales, which is really going to lead us into part of our conversation today. Um, without a doubt, uh, uh, Matt is the real deal, and Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to have have you on the program. Thank you, Jeff. I was excited when I saw your request to talk and I uh, always enjoy talking about classic cars and the, in the world of the, that we all live in with them. So, Isn't that true? Now, yeah. let's, let's start kind of from the beginning. Where did your love of cars come from? I mean, you, you, you cover the gambit from <laughs> to wrenching to, uh, yeah. my gosh, everything. So how did this start? You know, it it was all really self-taught, you know, all the way back to high school, just buying cars and uh, and fixing them up, making them faster and running around and getting in trouble. (laughs) Um, But uh, just always been a passion for uh, for cars. I when I was young, I I had a paper route. I found a 510, you know, when I was 15 years old, I bought it for like 50 bucks and fixed it, sold for $1,500. And wow, I'm a car dealer. I made more than I did the paper route all year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just always been something. My father was into Corvettes, so we, we did a Corvette. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I quickly found my passion light in German cars, um, you know, everything from the Volkswagens to Porsches. So here, here we are. <laughs> And so from all the dealership experience, racing experience, you got into your, um, do you call it a dealership? What, what, tell us about the company. Tell us about the name, how it transpired. Yeah. Let's just start there. You know, uh, you know, we are a dealership. We are here in Portland, Oregon. Um, we have, we're a full service dealership in that way too, is we have a full service department, full detail department. Uh, we do all of our all own engines and transmissions and do everything. We have a, a great staff here. Um, avant-garde spun off. Um, um, we started this about 2015 or 16, I think it was, uh, you know, I was, you know, I've done everything from running a Ferrari store for uh, Ron talking Gran Turismo, um, to being a dealer principal in a Lamborghini dealership. Then, you know, the 2007, eight recession came around. So I had to switch gears a little bit, do a little bit more mainstream European cars. And that just kind of got old, you know. Um, but I'd always loved, you know, you know, dealing with the, the specialty cars and, and uh, especially air cooled 911s. So we, uh, I just really turned my focus to just be working on those types of cars and, you know, cars similar. Um, and then, the, and always been a follower of the, of the bring a trailer. Uh, uh, the forum at the time. And it was always great whenever they'd highlight one of my cars I had, you know, my phone ring off the hook. It was pretty cool. And, and that, that was just always the, the neat thing. Then when they started the auction stuff, I was one of the first to run auctions with them. And now like we're at, we're probably pushing 750 auctions now with, uh, with bringing a trailer. And uh, we're the, I think we're one of the top two or three sellers um, I think we're number one by dollar volume just because of the, the price range of cars we sell. But so we started avant-garde and, you know, avant-garde, you know, the definition is new and usual, experimental. And I think we carved out a, a new auto dealer niche market. And there's, you know, a bunch of guys trying to copy what we do now. Um, we do. Uh, so we bring in cars, either we, we either buy them or consign them. And we prepare them, and uh, which, which is a big process for us. And we place them on bring a trailer, and we sell everything through bring a trailer. So as in the world uh, world of a dealership, I don't have a showroom. I don't have salespeople. Um, 
I don't have that, but everything else, we are a full dealership. <laughs> <laughs> now, prior to bring a trailer, what uh-huh. was your normal um, routine when it came to trying to sell and market a car? And uh, wh- how did you transition to becoming a top seller on bring a trailer? Right. You know, you know, even it, it goes back to even the, the you know the eBay days. Um, I always sold a lot of stuff on eBay. What I quickly found is, you know, on the internet sales, we get you know a lot of eyeballs on something, have a lot more opportunity than you know even going back to the days of newspaper and auto trader ads. Um, so you know, eBay was a big thing. You know, the the quickest thing that I found, and you know, I'd say we're a bit of perfectionists in our presentation. You know. Uh, I can't stand looking at an ad and somebody shot half-assed with their uh, iPhone or the iPad. Um, so we, I always have put a lot of energy into making the car look right. You know, the, the photos, the, the, the details, you know, just getting all the information. And uh, um, Josh Bryan, who's our photographer, and he has, he's now spun off his own company, the Image Engine, um, and, but he still shoots all of our cars. Um, and I've really worked hard to get this, uh, you know, new model off the ground and, uh, and really st- separating us just because our presentation is so much better. And, uh, and bringing trailer uh, really has a format to allow you to do that. I yeah. Mean- yeah, we yeah. can put as many photos in. We can yeah. put, you know, we get to uh, really showcase the car how we want to do it. How about the comments? You know, you hear a lot yeah. about there are people sometimes that make comments that I'll say aren't well versed in the car. Um, they're either well not well versed. Yeah, they are not well versed, or they try to throw bombs out there to lower a value of a car, or try to do that. And you know, I think that's what's been the hindrance to uh, to make and bring a trailer completely mainstream. You know, bring a trailer has a lot of dealers on it, and because I think the dealers only ones can have the thick skin to uh, to weather the comments and be active on it. You know, in some ways, you know, I say we don't have salespeople, we don't have this, that, but, you know, I'm on Brain Trailer 24 hours a day managing these comments, uh, you know, being proactive, getting more information out there and uh, keeping it, keeping it clean. I, I think we have a really good reputation. And uh, so people don't mess with us as much as somebody that's just trying to get into it where they, they might not have the experience in how to do it. And people are very observant. You have a 190 Mercedes SL up on Mm -hmm. the auction. Now I was looking at um, a good buddy of mine uh, back when I had car collector owned one. And Uh back then it wasn't worth a lot of money. Today they were (laughs) fortune. But they noticed that the clock was missing. Right. And I thought, you know, that was somebody really took time to go through all those photos to find that one photo where they could even notice that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the you know the funny things we end up finding the clock, so the clock is in it now, and that's all been done. But yeah, no, all that kind of stuff is a big deal, um, and trying to be ahead of everything as as much as possible. Or if there's a flaw, just acknowledge it, and instead of dancing around it, just call it out. Say, here's the flaw, you know, you know. But let's uh, you know, or here's the solution for it, or we'll we'll address it, or um, I'll take care of it before the auction's over. You know, there, there's stuff that gets definitely gets caught that you know maybe we would have missed, but you know. We do have about a hundred cars here where we're cranking through. <laughs> wow. And, and we, you were touching on it briefly, but the steps you go through to really yeah. look at a car, to make sure it's everything it should be. It's the right car. Um, yeah. It was very impressive. It's on your website. Uh, yeah. People can go and see all of that, but, you know, uh, walk us once again through the steps that you take and why you do it. Right. Well, I'll start with why we do it uh, and I'll go through the steps, but the, why we do is because, you know, the bottom line is it's my reputation um, and avant-garde reputation uh, when the car uh, gets the new owner. And if the, you know, it's something I want everybody to be proud. I want to be proud of when it leaves here. So we go through the car comes in, we do a mechanical assessment. Um, we will do compression tests. We'll check out, check all the stuff. If the car isn't serviced up to date, because a lot of these classic cars have been sitting around or even lit newer model cars have been sitting around and they haven't had their oil changed or they haven't had their brake fluid flush in, in a long time. So we'll go through and do all that type of stuff. Make sure it's got current tires. 
Uh, and you know, that's, I think that's a big benefit when somebody buys a car from us is they're getting a car that should be able to get in and drive and have fun with right away. Now there are old classic cars. There's no crystal ball, but we, we, we do our damn best. <laughs> They're old cars and you know, they can be problematic yes. old cars. I mean, let's yeah. just face it. And but I, I want to make sure. Dirty. Yeah, exactly. I still want to make sure when it leaves here, all the lights are working, all the stuff, <laughs> but yeah, it's, but it's, uh, we, we just spend a lot of time with that. The next is our detail. Um, and, uh, we have a good detail staff, um, and they go through all the cars. We spend a lot of time on the engine compartment, the underside of the car, the backside of the wheels, the, um, just all the things to make sure it's right. And uh, in the neat thing in that process, we also find things that are wrong so we can correct them ahead of time. So, um, that's, uh, that's the you know, the best part of that. So after the details, details done, it goes for video. I'm sorry. It goes for uh, photos. Um, and uh, we have a separate facility for that. Um, and probably one of the largest light boxes in, on the West coast. <laughs> and uh, Josh does his magic. And uh, that's the best thing. The best thing. The final part is just the drive video and walk around video. And uh, lately I've been doing a lot of videos where I just kind of talk about the car and, and go through and talk about positive negatives and what, uh, what they should see or what's special about the, about that special car. So. And then once it sells, um, then you have a partner in crime, I'll call her your wife. Yeah. Yes. Handles all the paperwork, the final details. Yes. Um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and how long have you has have you and and Amy is her name been working together? Yeah. So Amy, uh, Amy is a partner in the company, and we've been together for going on. Well, we've been doing this for almost fifteen years now, and she's been uh, working running the office for most of those years. Uh, but it's it's she's a real perfectionist, and it gets down to. Uh, you know, how things are done, people's uh, communication, and, uh, you know, she makes everything pretty. So it's good. <laughs> well, she's a planner by trait, which yes. in this yeah. business and anyone that has bought a car and had to get it from point A to point B, make sure everything's in line. It's not yeah. an easy task. And no. everything I've read and seen, she's um, she's just she's amazing. amazing. She just yeah. makes it go like like clockwork, which is, yeah. which is a true yeah. credit to you and your company. Yep. Um, the, the last step is transportation. We, we help people with transportation when they have to buy a car and, and, uh, we have our, our series of vetted drivers and stuff that, that move our cars around. So I think that's a good service as well. We provide. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about, um, the generation, you know, who, who, mm -hmm. who are the buyers of these cars? Do you see it changing a lot? Do you have a feel for uh, you're selling high end cars, um, but looking at the traffic that's on all of your auctions? Yeah. I mean, wow, it's, it's impressive. Do you do you do you, do you deal with a lot of the same buyers or do you find that they're, I, you know, I do. I do have a handful of same buyers. I, 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 you know, I'd say we, we have a dozen guys that bought two, three, four cars each um, over the years oh, uh, on avant-garde. We've also had consigners buy their own car back because they fall back in love with it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you know, I, I'd say our, our buyers are, it's a world market, you know, you know, certain par parts of the world are hotter than others, depending on the you know, um, market fluctuations. Uh, it seemed like there for a while, I sent tons of cars to Europe and now we haven't been sending as many. Um, the, we send a, send a lot of cars to the East coast because the quality of the Western uh, West coast cars is so much better because we don't have the, the, the rust and road salt issues that, you know, eight way three, five, sixes and nine elevens and that type of stuff where the West coast cars are just as much more solid car. Um, and they recognize that. Uh, but you know, it, it's, we do a lot of business down in Arizona. We do a lot, we do a lot of business in Canada. I mean, we're everywhere. You know, like I said, we, we, we buy and we, we buy and sell, but we do do a lot of consignments. I've had uh, people, uh, we currently have two cars getting shipped here from Germany 
first on consignment. Then I got a car from Puerto Rico last year on consignment. Get a lot out of Canada. So I get people internationally shipping cars to, to avant-garde for 911R to pre- present them. You know, we, we, we talked briefly about um, how the uh, bring a trailer was basically a, a forum type format. Yeah. Um, then it went into the auction format. What do you see the future of how you're marketing cars? Uh, bring a trailer. What, what? What's the? Do you think there's going to be any real big changes in the next several years? It's hard to say. There's a bunch. There's always people trying to get you know go after the that that format and uh, um, you know get their piece of the pie. You know, P car market's been trying real hard and they've got a little bit of traction. Uh, cars and bids. I, he does a lot, but it's more mainstream cars. Um, but you know, there's others that are just you know been trying. You know, the most recent one I think is marked, you know, which is owned by Porsche Digital, and they seem like they're really floundering. Um, but you know, problem with bringing trailer, you get such a big machine, and uh, now with the because they have the users, you know, I, I wouldn't want to list with any other uh site just because you're not going to get the eyeballs. Yeah. You know, I think they have. You know, last time I heard it was four hundred thousand, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's six hundred thousand. You know, registered bidders. I mean, where else are you can get that? That's massive. You know, yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, uh, you know, we'll we'll regularly on a specialty car have you know thirty thousand views. I mean, that's just you know unheard of in any other format. And those are people are generally interested in looking at that vehicle. So, what are, what are some of the challenges that you see? Um, um, as you look at your, your business model, um, and and how do you how do you address them? I mean, if, if what's the difference between my being an individual seller wanting to put a car on, bring a trailer, or somebody saying, "Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm really busy. I don't want to, anybody that sold a car knows that yeah, it's a nightmare, a lot of work. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to call Matt. I want to let yeah. Matt and his group and his company do it. Just tell us a little bit about that. Well. You know, selling a car privately on bringing a trailer is something you definitely can do, but you got to be prepared to have the thick skin for the comments. And if it's not something you do all the time, you're not going to get all the points that people are going to want and, and answer or, or have questions about, or your photos are going to be an iPhone photo or, 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 you know, somebody else who thinks they're a great photographer. They're just going to miss all the points. It's just... It kills me when I see a really special car on a brand trailer and, you know, it's half lit and, and filthy. And it's just like, you know, you know, bringing a car to us, you know, we charge a, a percentage, but you're, you're going to get double what our percentage is more just because we get, we just do it right. And people feel more confident buying a car from Amit Gar because they know we've gone through the process. You know, I think what the, the dangers of uh, future brain trailer will be is just, the, you know, having it get too segmented with too many auctions and be, you know, too many people that aren't, you know, as proud of other cars or care about the reputation, putting stuff up there and, and burning people. And then, you know, that, that's the danger to them, I think, because, you know, that's what happened to eBay. That's what happened to Craigslist. And that's what happened to all these other sources. You know, you, you get the, you know, the bad, the bad gentleman out there that does a, uh, you know, puts a car out that sh- it shouldn't be ready for sold and sells it for too much, and you know is no longer there. In the interview that was done, uh, um, you did an interview in a Sports Car Market, Keith Martin's publication. Yeah, um, and and your wife brought up an awesome point. Mm-hmm. When you're going to buy a car, know the car, do your homework. Yeah, if you haven't driven the car, try and drive the car. So there are no surprises right. on the back yeah. end. I I can't imagine people that that pull up for the first time. And I, I had this experience myself. I was getting into a Ferrari. I'd never driven a Ferrari. Right. I felt like an idiot. I had no idea how in the world to even drive this car. Right. Um, I had to go yeah. for a driving lesson. And, you yeah. know, you know that I, happens a lot. That happens. Yeah, no, it happens a lot. Or people have, you know, they had the poster on the wall or they had this vision of this car that was just going to make their life better. And, and they get the car. I'm like, yeah, this isn't, you know, I, I like my normal driver driver or I, I'm more not a classic car guy. You know, you know, when I get a guy, you know, calls me up after you get the car and you know talks about, well, it's got these smells, and this is like, yeah, it's an old car. They do that. <laughs> um, or or you know, it's just it's 
it's definitely different. Um, you know, today's modern car are so full of technology and isolate the driver from the actual mechanics of it. And that's the complete office of a classic car. So, you that's know, true. it can be a, a true racing guy. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot different. So, um, yeah, but educating yourself the most, you know, asking good questions um, and making sure you're buying for someone who is putting all the, the, all the information out there, showing all the pictures, showing all the details, you know, showing all the documentation. Um, I guess that's another step that we do. I spend a lot of time on research um, on making sure the car's got the right motor and the right stamping, the right date codes, the, the right options, the, the right parts, um, you know, ordering, you know, data cards or authenticity reports or, um, or Marty reports. I mean, just doing all that stuff to really, you know, build the story behind the car. Um, and the, the the I think that adds a lot of value. The more yeah. pedigree a car yeah. has, the more value. The more Absolutely. Value. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing worse than getting to some really neat car in uh, all restored and not having one lick of paperwork. You know, it's like, ah. <laughs> so again, those are the cars you want to wait and stay away from. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, the, the, the other great thing about bringing trailer auctions opposed to, I'd say, live auctions, especially if you go to a Meekum or Barrett Jackson, is, you know, you get to hear this thing. You get to have seven days to, um, a, maybe have an inspection. You know, PPIs are always a good idea. Um, or, or go look at it or go drive it or, or ask all the questions or enlist an expert on that car to look at it for you. And there's all sorts of things you can do where you're much more protected with buying a car like this than going to Meekum, you know, because, you know, as soon as that hammer falls, you own it. It doesn't matter if it's broken half of the one other side of the stage. Yeah, you've already spent that money like yeah. it or not. It's down the road motors. <laughs> what, what types of things do you do to build awareness for you and your company and your brand? Well, bringing, bringing trailers is huge just because you have so many eyeballs out there. Um, we're not allowed to really brand the, the, the cars in the auction. Um, we usually have a little blurb in our video intro and we have our license plate inserts on the car. But um, besides that, they, you know, th that's usually how they're figuring us out. Um, the, so th there's that. Um, but, you know, what we do on also our cars, um, we have a company that uh, writes additional articles. It goes out to um, the press. You know, we have cars that pop up on Yahoo or Amazon and all those types of sites all the time. Um, we feed all our stuff onto our website, which feeds out to all the normal sources. So you can see them, you know, if you are on uh, Auto Trader or or car gurus or something and you're looking for that Porsche and it shows up and, you know, then we say it's, Hey, it's in auction. Go, go to it here. Um, I'll never end an auction early. I'll never try to, uh, it would, you know, it's just, you know, it's not, it's a dis, uh, service to the, the, the sellers. So, you know, that's how we really brand ourselves, you know, we're, and we do a lot of events. We do, we're, we're out there in, in the, in the space. So, and how did you come up with your name for your company? You know, we were just, like I said, we just wanted to have something new and unusual. And that's what it, what it means. You know, we just want something different. You know, this is a totally different business model. I don't think there was anybody else that was going to commit their whole business to an auction platform uh, like this at the time, for sure. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about. We kind of what's hot, what's not. You've had cars that probably just light up and you're going, oh, my God. And then you, uh, my guess is you probably had some that I, I don't know what's. Yeah. You know, this isn't getting the attention it should. Right. You know, it, air cool coupe 911s are always hot. They just always work. You know, targets are, are closer behind um, the, you know, the. the RS American market, the, I mean, all, all that type of stuff is always very hot. Anything that's unique, anything with uh, paint to sample colors is a big deal um, right now. Um, so the, you know, I'd, the whole Porsche market is just, is pretty crazy. Um, you know, the American stuff um, that we do a little bit of, it can be really good actually. And has been, been pretty strong. Um, I find those cars is the ones I have to spend most amount of time on documentation on because they're so hard to figure out, you know, 
you know, somebody brings me a Chevy Z28 Camaro, I just want to, you know, run the other way because, you know, there's so many fakes and try to figure out it's, it's near impossible because there's the, the factory documentation stuff is so tough. Um, then every, and everybody's a keyboard warrior of what they think is correct. And, you know, they might be wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, really the, the German stuff, we do quite a bit of Jaguar, Austin Healy stuff. Um, that's all, all fun and good. Um, you know, late model, uh, you know, supercars always do really well. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, everything's been, it's been, we've been in pretty lucky times the last uh, few years. Um, and hopefully they're going to continue strong. Well, with the current economy having, I'll call it a question mark right now. Yeah, it definitely has a question mark right now. This this week has probably been the biggest question mark week, I'd say, we've had in five and years. Cars are a good investment, you know? Yeah. They're not going to make yeah. any more 19 no. bank model anything. So yeah. they're a good investment. Exactly. Um, um, what is, when, when you look back at how this whole thing was created, what, what do you think was, was the big, did, cause you didn't start thinking you were going to go to bring a trailer. What, how did the, how did your business model kind of unfold? Well, you know, we actually did, you know, when I, when I made the conscious decision to, uh, stop trying to do a, a showroom style dealership and just do bring a trailer. That's, that's what exactly what I did. I, 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 you know, we pivoted completely and uh, sold the location, got a new location. that's more of a warehouse. And in fact, we, we, now we have two warehouses. We have our main office, which is about 10,000 square feet with our, our mechanics and everything. And then we have a 25,000 square foot uh, warehouse. It's our storage and, uh, a detail shop where stuff's coming in and out. Wow. Yeah. Well, sometime we'll have to make an appointment and come, <laughs> yeah. come take a look at that. Yeah, it, it's, it, you know, there's people that go to car shows and, or go to uh, museums and stuff and they come to my place. I'm like, what the, <laughs> but you know, I'm a big Corvette guy. I've owned a lot of yeah. Corvettes. And uh, when I was on your site this morning, prior to our uh, interview today, I noticed you had a 1990 Corvette. I said, well, that's kind of a car. The ZR1. One. Yeah. And I, I clicked on and I was, I was taken back at where the bidding is on that car right now. And yeah. I didn't have a chance to read everything about it, but I thought, wow, this is, I got to come back to this. Yeah. Yeah. That's a neat car, but no, we, you know, you know, I really go for the really the unusual car, you know, the really low mile example or the, you know, the amazing history or amazing options. You know, those are really what we, we want to be. I get a lot of requests for people to um, have us uh, sell their car. And there's just some stuff that I just, you know, it's not our, it's not special enough, honestly, because it doesn't matter if I'm selling a, a $20,000 car or a $400,000 car, we put the same amount of effort into it. So you know, we just want to make sure, you know, everything in our presentation is totally, uh, you know, the same. When, um, when we start talking a little bit about some of the memories that we all have, most of us have kind of a favorite, maybe even a humorous story that we like to tell something that has happened in our career somewhere. Now, because of the span that you have from the dealerships to the, to the auction sales to everything else, I, I, your, your mind's probably going 90 miles an hour, but is there anything that kind of stands out a little bit? You know, I always, you know, probably like, you know, I, I like, we like to build cars here. So um, I do two or three custom builds a year. Of, and, you know, we do nylon and safaris or hot rods and stuff. And, uh, you know, I built a, you know, it's kind of a famous car now. I've, I built this uh, 911, it was uh, orange, it was 68 911s. And, and you know, I built it to look like a 911R. You know, it's kind of where I was building that car when we, I signed my brain trailer, uh, uh, handle, which is, you know, 911R, um, and, you know, just going through that whole process and owning that car and doing a bunch of stuff with it and selling just the motion of letting that car go after I finally like, Oh, I'm going to sell it. And I sell I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's always, uh, you know, that's always the roller coaster of, uh, being really passionate about cars that, you know, with, with having them come and go and in the dreams and, and the, the processes of them. And I, and I would bet with all of the both buyers and sellers that you come across, um, 
it, there is an emotion. There's something that strikes absolutely why they want that car or maybe unfortunately why they have to sell that car. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's uh you know, I picked up a car that's been coming up pretty soon, and it's an 83 911 SC. Just, a, you know, it's a, a nice car, a little, a little white car. And I went and picked it up for the gentleman, and he's, you know, in a retirement community. It was his wife's car. And just the emotions of them let, you know, giving me the keys to go take care of their baby that they've had for 40 years. I mean, it's it's a lot. People get so attached to their cars, and, you know, I sure don't see people getting attached to, to their Priuses, so... <laughs> No, that's a fact. <laughs> and like you said, the new vehicles of today, it's awesome. They have so much technology, but right. it's not like driving the cars of yesterday. No. I mean, you're absolutely driving the car and yeah. it's, it's a whole different experience. Exactly. Exactly. It's like the Lotus Super 7 we have right now. You, 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 it's like driving that car, you wear the car. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, kind of some closing thoughts here. Tell us a little bit about how people get a hold of you. Um, uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Email, yeah. website, the, the, phone best, the best way is, you know, is our website, which is super simple. It's a dash gc.com, a hyphen G is in golf, C is in Charlie.com. Super simple. Um, you know, you, there's contact forms in there. Um, or if you want to bring a trailer auction, doesn't matter if you're on a car that you want to, you know, actually ask a question on it or, or you want to contact us about your car, just use the contact seller on any of the auctions and it comes right to us. And uh, we get, we get a lot of of contact that way. Um, But, you know, we're out there pretty easy to find search number one uh, seller and brand trailer. My name comes up. (laughs) Well, you, you built an incredible business. Um, I, I've I've dealt with bring a trailer for a long, long time uh, in their infant years. And yeah, they're great guys. uh, I was I was just blown away at what you're doing on there, and uh, uh, gosh, God bless you, and thank <laughs> you for for your time today and and yeah. all your your knowledge and insight to this. Uh, we yeah. really appreciate it, and um, I, I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Happy talking time. I really appreciate it.